I'm going to go ahead and toss it out there. It has not been a great week at the Lucian's household. Uh, Lucinda's dad's not doing great. At this point in his life, he's got a collapsed lung. His kidneys are decorative. His heart has more stents in it than a pre-COVID Bears game. And he's back in the hospital right now for the third time in the past two months. And every time I see him at this point, in the back of my head, there is a voice that's saying, please do not ask me about the afterlife. So for years, he and I have ribbed each other a bit about one another's beliefs. He's religious, but in like a passing whatever you say kind of way. He doesn't know anything about his religion. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't pray. But if you ask him what he believes, he'll give you the whole God in heaven thing. And if he finds out that you don't believe in that, he will incessantly fuck with you about it for the entire time that you're married to his daughter, apparently. And in the past, that's all just been good fun, right? Like, He's the kind of guy that fucks with everybody because he's too manly to tell him he loves him. Picking on me is a term of endearment with him, but if we talk about it now, it won't be a joke. He'll turn to me with that serious expression that I've only seen on his face half a dozen times in 23 years, and he'll ask me, do you really believe that it all just ends when we die? And I don't know what I'll say back. I honestly don't know what I'll say. I, I, I do this for a living. I defend this position for a living. In the abstract, it's so fucking easy when I'm shouting into the void, when I'm talking to you, it's real easy to say, obviously there's no afterlife. The very concept doesn't match up with anything we know about anything. It's a hell of a lot harder to look a guy about to fall off the edge of a cliff in the face and tell him confidently that there's no net down there. I mean, but what's the right answer even? Is, is, is honesty brave or callous at this point? Should I stick to my guns or should I offer him up the lie that he wants to hear? I've been wrestling with that question for the last couple of days, certain that it was going to come up. And to be honest, it has shaken me to my fucking core. It's the kind of question that forces an atheist podcaster to look around his studio and ask what the hell we're even doing here. I, I mean, he, here's this thing that I've dedicated my entire life to defending and spreading. And when I examine it at this particular angle in this particular light, it looks like a bludgeon to beat a terrified old man with. And then I remember who the culprit is. I remember the reason it's so hard and the reason that this falls on my shoulders and who made my beliefs look like a bludgeon. And then I remember what we're doing here. And I remember that religion can go fuck itself. It isn't my fault the emperor is naked and it's not my fault he thought he was wearing clothes. So fuck everybody who ever sold the idea of an afterlife. Fuck them for making me face this question in the first place. Fuck them for fashioning and perpetuating a lie so beautiful that it made the truth too ugly to behold. I mean, obviously, this is a hard fucking thing to deal with. Our own mortality is the hardest thing that most of us will ever have to deal with. It's something so hard to deal with that we build whole institutions and shit just so that we can hide this question behind their walls. We hope that if we put enough statues and, and, and holy books and stained glass windows between us and this question, we won't notice it when we look in this direction. And then eventually we find ourselves standing in a spot where we have to wrestle with it and we find ourselves entirely unprepared because we've been wallowing in an unconvincing lie the whole fucking time. I, I, I mean, and look, if the lie worked, people like me would never have to tread this question, would we? I don't turn to flat earthers when I'm forced to look at the horizon and ask them what they really believe. And if they tell me, I would laugh at them because they're wrong and it's stupid. If religious people actually believed in their afterlives, they wouldn't be threatened by my refusal to do the same. And look, you know, like maybe if it really was just this, right? It was just that we all couldn't cope with our own mortality, so we all agreed to play along with this lie so that we'd be able to get through our day-to-day -day lives without being crushed by existential despair. If that's all it was, it would be a lot harder for us to claim the moral high ground in this. I'm not saying we still wouldn't have it, but it would be much harder to justify it if the people most vociferously perpetuating the lie weren't selling it for cash. But that takes all the wind out of the altruism sale, doesn't it? At that point, playing along with the lie also means playing along with the con artist, and that wipes away any hint of moral ambiguity quite nicely. But of course, knowing all that doesn't make the fucking question any easier to answer. It just makes it easier to direct my rage at how hard it is. I mean, I'm still wrestling with what I'll say if it comes up, and I'm still hoping it doesn't. But 
for whatever it's worth, the, the idea I'm leaning towards right now is an approach I call tentative honesty. If I absolutely had to answer the question right now, I'd tell him, yeah, I, I don't believe that there's anything on the other side. But hey, man, I'm wrong all the fucking time. And I hope this is one of those times. But even best case scenario, you better act like I'm right and not wait until the afterlife to tell people you love that you love them. And then I'd tell them I love them.